Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to make a very useful tool that will be a macOS app for testing push notifications on simulator. Let's see what we will be building today. This is how our macOS app will look like. It will have the options for selecting the simulators and these simulators will be added by us using the add functionality. We can always select between the simulators and these simulators will be saved across the sessions. So every time you go for testing the push notifications, you do not need to add a simulator. And then we will be having a section for selecting the payloads. So some sample payloads will be there. We can always edit them as per our requirements. And even we can edit them while testing the push notifications. Below that, we will be having a section for logs. So it will tell us that while sending push notification, if something goes wrong, we can always debug it using the information kept provided by logs. And we can always send the notification to different simulators by just changing our selection from the drop down box. So more or less, this is what we will be building today. And it will be saving a lot of time while testing the push notifications. To keep the video short, I'll just walk you through the code that what I have done for making this app. But you do not worry about the source code. I'll be hosting this project on the GitHub and will put the link in the description. So you guys can always fork it from there. You can download it from there. And then you can go through the code for having a better understanding that which part is responsible for which functionality. And side by side, you can have a look at this video where I'll be explaining each and every functionality so that if you have any doubt regarding any part that gets sorted. So let's dive in. Uh, here in the app delegate, uh, there's nothing going on and before that I'll just just like to tell you that for creating a macOS app We need to do nothing else, but just as usual File new project and instead of selecting the iOS app we go for the macOS app. That's all. That's what I have done So if you want to build it from scratch, you can you can go with this approach Otherwise, you will be always having the the cloned project So in the app delegate, there's there's nothing much the boilerplate code and in the view controller we are having pretty much so let's break it let's take it step by step so first of all let's go for the ui part because that is pretty much similar to what we do in ios uh, rather the core functionality for sending the push notification so let's first take a look at the ui that how that window is built and then we will deep dive in on how to send the push notifications so here in the storyboard this is our view controller that gets presented when we when we open the application so that this is our initial view controller and in this application we are having the only view controller that is this one herein we are having this ns combo box component that is being used as a drop down for selecting the simulators and these are just the static labels where we show the identifier of the selected simulator these are two push buttons for opening an alert for opening the pop-up where we will take the input from the user for adding the simulator and on click of edit simulator we will open the same pop-up but it will be having the details pre-filled of the simulator that is to be edited and these two components this one and this one these two components are nothing but just the scrollable text view so let me just tell you if i go for text view here my bad text view so this is the component that i have used this is scrollable text view so here we will be printing the the selected payload and that payload will be selected from this list so for this i am using this table view uh, the table view in ios and mac os is almost similar so that's why i'm not explaining this in much all you need to do is just drag a table view here and for sending the push for triggering the notification we are having this button this is again the same push button just like this add add, add simulator and edit simulator so in mac os we have different type of buttons if you go for just typing the button here you will see that push button texture rounded button gradient button and many other types of button and each of them is for a specific purpose but for our application here i have just used the this push button here so the same button for push add and edit all three things and again, this is the same scrollable text view. And for these lines, these horizontal and the vertical lines, just to separate the sections that I have used as a separator. So we have a default component for them. So if you go for horizontal line and similarly the vertical line. So I have used those components here. So from UI aspect, it is almost similar to as that of iOS. The similar components are being used here like table view, the labels, the buttons. There's only one component that is different from iOS that is this NS combo box and even this is pretty easy to use so I'll explain this in a moment but yeah this is pretty much about the UI about our window. Now let's look at the code. 
So this is our view controller and on the top we are having these IB outlets. I have connected them from the storyboards and we are having outlet for almost everything that we designed in our UI. So we are having this edit simulator button, this simulator combo box. And the reason for taking the outlet of edit simulator button is that because I want to disable it till the time there is no simulator in the drop down box. So that's why I'm having an outlet of this. And similarly, we are having the outlets for other components also. Then we have two dictionaries here. One is for simulators and one is for payloads. This payloads dictionary will be used as a data source for populating our table view, the sample, pay, the sample payloads table view. And the simulators dictionary will be used as a data source for populating the combo box from which the user will be selecting a simulator. So these are nothing new. I mean, uh, there, there's no rocket science in this. This is just the dictionary for simulators and payloads. And now comes the lifecycle method. So in view did load, what we are doing here, let's see it. So first of all, I am fetching the simulators if they are saved in the user defaults. So what we are doing here is that we are saving the simulators in the user defaults. Now what I mean by saving the simulators is that we are saving the key value pair of the name of the simulator and the identifier of the simulator as a dictionary in the user defaults. So whenever the user goes for adding a simulator, we take two things as input. The one will be the name of the simulator and the second will be the identifier of the simulator. We will take both the things and we will save them in the user defaults. And accordingly, we'll update our drop-down box, the NS combo box too. But here in the view did load, so the first thing that I'm doing is that I'm fetching the saved simulators from the user defaults. So if user is having any of them saved, we should just fetch it and should populate the drop-down box. This is that. And then we are having the similar concept, the similar dictionary for the payloads as well. So I am not using the saved payloads as of now in the application, but it is just a provision. So in case user wants to save some payloads in the user defaults for future use. So it might be the case that a certain structure, a certain payload is frequently used. So we can always save it in the defaults and then fetch it and then populate our, our sample payload stable view there. So that is what it is being done here. And then this is the condition to check that if the simulators is empty, that is if user has not added any simulators, if it is not having any of the simulators for sending the push, then what we do is we just disable the push button, the edit simulator button, and we just hide the, the identifier labels. So let me just tell you, uh, this is my identifier container where I'm having the label for showing the identifier of the simulator. So if the simulators, data source that the simulators dictionary is empty and just you know hiding that container and disabling the edit and the push button then i have set the delegate and the data source of the table view and just call the reload data this is pretty much usual stuff that we do in ios as well now comes some helper methods so let's have a look at them one by one this is the method through which we will show the alert through which we will show the pop-up for taking the input for adding the simulators or editing the existing ones. So let me just show you this in action first and then maybe we can go through the code. So let me just run the application once. I'll show you that how this alert comes. So if I go for add simulator, you can see that as of now that the simulator dropdown is, is empty. So we are not having this label views and also the push button, the edit button is disabled. So if I go for adding a simulator, what we are expecting is that we should get a pop-up alert sort of thing wherein I can input the details. So if I click on this add simulator, you see that I get this, this box, this pop-up, this alert, whatever you can call it for getting the simulator details wherein I can add the simulator name. So let's say uh, iPhone 11 maybe and some identifier. So this will be something like something like this some string would be there and i will tell you that from where you can get this string and if i click the save this has been added here so now let's see that from where you can get this identifier and how it will be added in this drop down box so for getting the identifier you will just go on window device and simulators and in the simulators you can get the identifier of any of the simulators that you want to add so for iphone 11 I'm having this identifier, I'll just copy it and paste it over there. Or for iPhone 12 Pro or whatever simulators you want to add, you can just get the identifiers from here. So now let's see that how that alert is being presented. 
we have just created an object of NS alert similar to what we have UI alert in our iOS. I just assigned a message text. So if user has selected the edit button, I'm setting the text as edit simulated details or the enter simulated details. Otherwise, edit two buttons as save and cancel, edit two text fields. So I mean, this is pretty familiar. And then I have added both the fields in a stack view and then added the stack view as the accessory view of the alert. So whenever user hits the save button, I'm first checking that whether this particular identifier is already existing in my simulator's data source. If so, I am, I'm not adding it, rather I'm printing this, this sort of error message that a simulator with the identifier already exists. You can handle this in more graceful manner, but here I'm just printing it. Otherwise, I add it to my dictionary with identifier as the key and the name as the name entered by the user. And then I call this method populate simulator combo box because I want to update my combo box with the data that user has just entered with the simulator that has just been added. So here I'm calling this populate simulator combo box. We will see this method in a moment. And at the same time, I'm updating my user defaults because the next time when user will open the application, user should get that edit simulators. Get simulated details is another helper method which receives key as a parameter. Now this key is the identifier of the simulator and it returns a tuple having two strings. So the first string is the name of the simulator and the second string is the identifier of the simulator. So I'm using it for updating the identifier whenever the, the change in the selection happens. Whenever user change the simulator from the combo box, I want to update the identifier label too. So I'm calling it there. So let's confirm this. If I check the callers here, or maybe if I just search it here, Yes, so you see that this is being called from the combo box delegate method. So whenever user change the selection, I call this method for getting the details of the selected simulator. So this is the get simulate details method. The next method here in the helper methods is populate simulator combo box. So nothing much is happening here. I'm just populating the combo box with the simulators that we are having. So essentially, I'm just calling this add item method of the combo box and passing the value. This value is the name of the simulators. So essentially I'm just iterating over my dictionary and adding the values in the combo box. And now we have this method populate default payloads. So what this method does is it populates the data source for the table view with the payloads that we are having. So, I mean, user can always go and create its own payload by, by just writing it in the, in the text view that, that we have put. But apart from that, what I have done here is that I have made some sample payloads. So let's say that if some particular structure is frequently used, why not just put it as a sample payload and user can always select. So if I go here and these are the sample payloads, if I click on basic, I'm having this basic structure. If I go for rich, so I, I know that in the rich notifications, the mutable content key should be one. Or if I want to send a silent notification, I know that the content available key should be one. So these are some basic structures which we can have as sample payloads and then we can directly use them just to save our time. So this method is just populating my payloads dictionary with those structures. And where are those structures coming from? So here I'm having this file payloads where I'm having this static strings for different types of payloads. This is the basic one, the rich one, and you can always change it. Feel free to change these structures as per your requirements, and it will be very handy when it will come to, you know, test the push notifications if you will be having these structures. So all you need to take care is about this key, simulator target bundle. Just put the bundle identifier of the application on which you will be testing the push notification. Just put it here and then maybe just change this APS if you want to. If you do not want to change it here in the code, you can always change it in the application. So if I go here, if I click on any of these sample payloads and now if I want to change it, I can always go for it. Changing title and I can push this notification with this new title. So that provision is also there. And now comes this method delete existing payload. So I'll explain this to you in a minute because before that we need to understand that how actually the push notifications are being triggered. So we will see this method in a minute. And after that we are having these actions. So, so these are just the actions connected through the storyboard that on click of add simulator button, I'm calling the add simulator alert method. 
with show edit as false here for the edit button i'm having show edit as true and then comes did click on push button we will understand this in detail and below that we have these delegate methods for the combo box and the table views and combo box i'm having this method combo box selection did change this will tell me whenever the user changes the selection in the combo box and accordingly i can update the identifier on, on the label and can do other relevant stuff and then there's the delegate and the data source method of the table view so pretty much similar to that of ios we have number of rows we have view for table column so i'm not go going in the detail about the ui but this is the method that is responsible for showing the names of the payloads and then this method table view selection did change this is equal to the method that we have did select item at index path so this is just the same thing on on selection i am just updating my text view with the payload selected so this is about the familiar stuff and now let's jump to the core part that how notifications are being triggered so this is the method that is responsible for it did click on push button which is called on the click of this push button and let's understand that what it is doing so for sending the push notifications on simulator it is essentially about just one command that is xrun and having simctl this word as an argument and then a couple of other arguments so if i show it to you this is the command let me just copy it from here maybe okay this is the command and this is this should be the identifier of the simulator on which you want to send the push notification and then this should be the path of a file which is having your payload so what we are doing here is we are creating a file having the payload our desired payload which we are taking as input from the user we are creating a file programmatically we are saving it in the document directory and then executing this command with the identifier of the of the simulator that has been set by user and the file that we just created so let's see it in detail so as soon as user clicks on the push button the first thing that we are doing here is we are checking our text view this one the payload one that whether it is empty or it is having some value if it is empty then it is obviously the case where we should return so i have just checked the length of the string here and have returned in the case it is empty otherwise we need to do something so for the first run or first push notification this line won't make much sense so let's skip this for now and then i'm getting the path of the document directory i am creating a file url the name of the file is test payload.pns feel free to change it as per your requirements or as per your wish and then i am getting this payload string so this is the string that i'm getting from this text view this text view of ours so we'll get this string we will write it to the file that we just created and then we will execute that command now comes the part that how to execute a command the shell command that is to be generally triggered from the terminal so for those things we have something called process in mac os we can create an object of process and then we can set the properties like launch path and arguments and then can simply call launch method to trigger our shell command that has been set by us using this launch path and the arguments so here in the launch path i have given usr bin env as the path this is the path from where this command will be executed and the arguments are xrun simctl and push and the order is important so these three and then comes the identifier label dot string value so this is the label this one because we want the identifier of the simulator for which the push notification is to be triggered so i'm just taking the identifier as the value of this label this is the identifier label dot string value and then the path of the file that we just created and this pipe is being used for reading the output so whenever you will trigger this command from the terminal the output will be there but because we are triggering this command using the process how to get the output for printing it in our logs text view so for that we are having this pipe and we have set the standard output for our task as the pipe for the error too so if the error comes in both the cases we want the output to be printed and then it's pretty much self explanatory stuff so 
we are just calling this launch method for triggering the command or should I say the push notification and printing our output in our logs text view. So this is our logs text view. As soon as the, the command will be triggered, we'll have it here. So this is how our push notification will be triggered. And when the next time, the second time when we'll go for sending another push, now this line will make sense. So what we will do here is that in delete existing payload method, we will get the path of the file that we created and we'll delete it first. You can always override it, but I am deleting it. And then through this piece of code, the file will be created again with new payload structure. So this is how you can test the push notifications on the simulators. Obviously there are ways for triggering them through terminal or you know the drag and drop of the APNS file. The ways are always there. But I found this more efficient because here I don't need to add simulators every time. I don't need to add payload structure or do not need to think about the payload structure every time. My frequently used structure is already saved there and I can in fact edit it as per my requirement whenever I need to. And there's a clean UI, just a push button to trigger the push notifications. I can in fact change the simulators as per my requirements. So this is you know more flexible, more scalable sort of thing. So if you want to try this, just clone the repo. The link is in the description. Change the code as per your requirement. Configure the payload structures as per your projects, as per your requirements. Each project has a different structure for deep link for, for handling the rich push notification. So just change it, just, just play with it. And I think that it will save a lot of time of yours. So that's pretty much for this video. A new video comes every week. So do subscribe to my channel. Let's write better code together. Happy coding and stay safe.